coverage continues right now as the massive manhunt in New York City and beyond continues for the man who shot 33 times on a Brooklyn subway. Ten people were wounded and many others hurt. Tonight, the New York City Police Department releasing these photographs. The man, 62-year-old Frank James, is now labeled a person of interest. Authorities say they have cell phone footage from an eyewitness showing James carrying out the attack. Witnesses say the shooting suspect left the scene in a green construction vest and a gas mask. But police are stopping short of calling him the suspect at this point. Cell phone video from earlier today shows the scene inside the subway station in Brooklyn. Witnesses say the shooter used some sort of smoke bomb prior to firing shots. The smoke filled up several subway cars and added to the confusion. 23 people were injured either by gunfire or smoke inhalation. There are no life-threatening injuries reported tonight. Police also say they found a U-Haul key, which they then traced back to James. It was found alongside an automatic handgun with three extended magazines, a hatchet, gasoline, and smoke grenades. Police say the investigation into the vehicle proves that it is somehow connected to the shooting. CBS 5's Samantha Croston continues our breaking news coverage right now. That's right, the NYPD identified 62-year-old Frank R. James as a person of interest in this case. James had rented a U-Haul trailer in Philadelphia that police linked to the crime by a key that was left at the shooting scene in a backpack full of fireworks, gasoline, a magazine, and smoke grenades. Investigators are not saying tonight that James is the shooter, just a person of interest. Early Tuesday, a gunman in a mask and construction vest set off a smoke grenade and fired at least 33 rounds on a subway train in Brooklyn. Ten people were shot and several others injured from trying to get away, some inhalation, even panic attacks. Video from the immediate aftermath shows commuters running away from the subway train, others helping the wounded. At the scene, authorities also found a handgun, a hatchet, and that key to a U-Haul fan that was later found unoccupied in Brooklyn. Tuesday evening, Governor Kathy Hochul held a press conference in Brooklyn, saying investigators will be looking at evidence and social media trying to find the motive behind this crime. But in my heart, this is a terrorizing action to put fear in the hearts of New Yorkers, but they don't know who they're messing with. They do not know that we will not bow down to an individual with a depraved heart who tries to st strike terror in our hearts. It wasn't successful. New York at this time, investigators say James has addresses in Philadelphia and Wisconsin. They have given out no further clue as to where he could be tonight. Reporting in the studio, I'm Samantha Croston. Sam, thank you. The governor was at a New York City hospital tonight visiting victims of the subway shooting. We'll continue to bring you new information this evening. In fact, the governor did uh, drop one new bit of information during that news conference. She said that in the hospital, she was meeting with children. Some of the victims of the attack in the subway today were young people, some as young as 12, who were taking the subway to get to school. Part of Syracuse's past on the south side of the city is now being used to provide safe and affordable housing for some of the most vulnerable in our community. The historic St. Anthony of Padua Catholic School and convent on West Colvin Street is now being called the Gardens at St. Anthony's Apartments. All 54 units are for people 55 and older, with apartments for seniors in need of support services. Mayor Ben Walsh calling this a model for what he hopes will be more affordable and safe housing for seniors. Our investigative reporter, Mary Keeler, got a look inside. All right. Benny Smith, seen here with the giant gold scissors and big smile, helped cut the ribbon at his new home. This is the first one I ever had that was rat-free, roach-free, and no, there's no violence. It's the gardens at St. Anthony's on Syracuse's south side, a $20 million project with funds from the city of Syracuse and New York State Homes and Community Renewal. Home Leasing LLC out of Rochester did the construction, but they're also managing the building and maintenance here on site. We have an aging population and we need to make sure uh, that people can age with dignity and grace and part of that is having uh, quality housing. Of the 54 units, half are supportive housing run by Nesentia health, which connects seniors to services they need. Meals on wheels, um, home health care, those types of services, as well as um, providing them with 
sort of a social work component. Grants paid for the furniture inside applied for by Nesentia Health, but director Amy Davis says the most important thing is the well-being of the people who live here. Census data shows 13 percent of Syracuse's population is 65 and up, a priority population for city leaders of late after the murder of 93-year-old Connie Torrey at the Skyline Apartments and 84-year-old Eva Fold at her Grant Village apartment in Syracuse. Syracuse, those deaths exposing filthy and dangerous living conditions. This building has security cameras and limited access to keep people who don't live here out. Nesentia's tenants will be checked on at least once a week. To ensure that the people who live here are happy here, they have their needs met here, and they stay here. And Benny Smith has no plans on leaving. I'm living better than I used to live, you know, and I, I hope for, that they open more places like this for other people. Tonight, another resignation in Albany. The governor's second-in-command stepping down late today amid federal charges related to campaign fraud. Brian Benjamin is accused of bribing a real estate developer to donate to his campaign in exchange for thousands of dollars in state funding. Federal prosecutors also say Benjamin lied on the vetting forms that he submitted when he was being considered for the job of lieutenant governor. Governor Kathy Hochul has not spoken publicly on this. She did issue a written statement, though she says she accepted the lieutenant governor's resignation. She says while the legal process plays out, it is clear to both of us that he cannot continue to serve as lieutenant governor. The governor says New Yorkers deserve absolute confidence in their government, and she says she will continue working every day to deliver for them. The scandal could, however, mean big trouble for the governor politically. She wound up in office because of a totally different scandal. She was, as you may recall, lieutenant governor under Andrew Cuomo, who left in disgrace last summer after a number of accusations of sexual harassment. Governor Hochul made history when she was sworn in as the first woman to ever be governor of New York State. She promised to clear Albany of corruption, a move to distance herself from Andrew Cuomo. Now there are 210 days until the election, when Kathy Hochul will ask voters to give her an elected term in office. For some voters, the latest scandal will be a concern. I'm not impressed with our governor at all right now. I don't think she she kind of got in there by default. And I don't like some of the decisions she's been making for COVID. It's a whirlwind. It just keeps going downhill for everything and these decisions. And then you appoint this, what was it, Lieutenant Governor, governor who is crooked as We'll continue to follow this breaking story from Albany. Updates anytime at cnycentral.com.